He and his father, in a way, they were they were grappling with the same issue, which was a kind of survivor's guilt um, after the loss of Stuart's younger brother. And that caused a lot of anger. And for Stuart, it was this need and this searching for approval. Nobody knew how to cope with that. They didn't have the skills to cope with that. Parents kind of, you know, turned to drinking and he was left to his own devices and he was angry. Stu's mother is uh, not exactly bitter, but she's had a rough life. She's lived through tragedy. She's still in love with the husband she separated from. She has one son left who seems to be not very anchored. He was in desperate search of his calling. And when he found it, even in spite of being, you know, uh, diagnosed with an incurable disease, he just got stronger and stronger spiritually. I mean, and the more that I talked to people who knew him, the more uh, they reiterated that to me. Where are you going? Well, I gotta get your ass to church on time. Who are you here to visit, sir? Father Stu. You and everybody else. I wish you can pray for an easy life, but the strength to endure a difficult one. It's not even just the mending of that relationship, it's that he was able to heal his family and heal that wound and reunite them. And, and for me, that always feels like it's the greatest victory. I think that's the beauty of this script, that it speaks about flawed human beings. All of them are flawed. I think we all wrestle with things that we want to put onto other people, when in reality is we have to make an inventory of who we are. Not giving up on people, you know? Um, seeing the good in people, and, and people can change, and people can grow, and, and in this tough time, there couldn't be a more, uh, more you know, important film.